Been here, you were active on Twitter. I'd love to share Mises U students during it. Let's get your numbers up, right? We can yeah, build, build some of that following. Uh, some other notes, you know, it is gonna be very hot outside. We often keep it very cold inside. Um, so you know, in the past, if you have a light jacket or something like that, it might be worth bringing. Um, also tonight and Friday and Saturday, more casual, rest of the week less so, so you know, coordinate uh, appropriately. Um, also just remember, right, you know, obviously as Misesians, we understand the importance of ideas in shaping society, but it's not ideas alone. It's the people that hold those ideas that matter. So please, you know, you're now part of a legacy by being here. Some of that comes with perks. You're gonna learn from some incredible people. You're gonna meet some great colleagues, maybe make some great friendships, but you also have some responsibilities. Um, obviously we have donor letters for the people that made it possible for you to be here. We expect you to conduct yourselves in a certain sort of way. We also want you to focus on how can you make an impact in the world taking these ideas you're gonna take away this week. So these are some, some things to think about. If any of you, any of you are interested in writing, uh, please come to me as well. We'd love to get you on the wire. And so without further ado, it's my great honor to introduce the president of the Mises Institute, Jeff Deist. Thank you, Tobe. You know, I've remarked before at Mises U, we've got to think about all the confluences that brought everybody here tonight. Pretty remarkable if you think about it, starting with, in 1840, the Mangers meeting each other, Anton and Caroline specifically, and uh, producing young Carl Manger a year later in 1840. So had that not happened, we don't know if any of us would be here. But on top of that, Fast forward 31 years, and still relatively young Carl Menger produces his Principles of Economics in 1871. Again, an event without which all of us might not be here tonight. It depends, in Auburn, Alabama, and SEC land of all places. Pretty far removed from what is now Poland, where Carl Menger was born, but nonetheless. Um, I mentioned he was 31 when he produced his seminal work, Principles of Economics. I assume most of you are around 21 or so. So you've got 10 full years <laughs> to come up with the book that'll radically change the entire direction of an entire field of economics. So you have plenty of time, 10 years. So get cracking on that. But you're actually very fortunate. Uh, we're all very fortunate to have the Mises Institute because a lot of people over the years have put together a program of economics in a very systematic and siloed way that makes it a lot easier for us to digest, whether we just digest one week of it or some people have gone on from Mises U to careers in economics. Uh, we, there's a lot of things that we take for granted now uh, that are very clear now, understanding and knowledge that weren't so clear uh, back when classical economics was dominating or neoclassical economics or Keynesianism or whatever it might be. So we're all the beneficiaries of a lot of uh, smart people who came before us. And just by being here, you're really part of some pretty legendary names who have taught at Mises U over the years. Names like Ralph Rako and Murray Rothbard and Ron Hamaway, Hans Hermann Hoppe and Roger Garrison. So it's exciting to be part of that. And if you're not familiar with these names, uh, in the world of economics, you soon will be. So one of my tasks tonight on behalf of Dr. Joe Salerno is to briefly introduce our faculty because we know some of you might not know them, haven't been here before, so you can, um, now some of them are legendary, some of them, some of them slightly less so, it just depends. I see Klein over there nodding, Klein's got, put himself in that legendary category, but so just, just uh, raise your hand or something so that our students can identify you. Per Island, I saw him here earlier. Yes, he's got a brand new book, a brand new primer out that you'll all be receiving a copy of. Uh, I saw Dr. Tom DiLorenzo here earlier. Oh, there he is. Uh, Lucas Engelhart is back there. Dr. David Gordon is here, sitting next to DiLorenzo. Jeff Herbner, I saw Professor Herbner earlier. Okay. 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 And uh, Sandy Klein from Baylor and Peter Klein. They claim to be related. Uh, Bob Murphy, who will be here uh, later this week, who's my co-host on the Human Action Podcast. Dr. Jonathan Newman is here. Uh, Patrick Newman, Dr. Patrick Newman is here. I think I saw Sean Rittenauer earlier, Professor Rittenauer. Okay, he's also up there. 
Uh, Tim Terrell, is he already here? Oh, Tim made it, good to see you. And Dr. Mark Thornton, I believe, is standing upstairs. Okay. And then finally, our Vice President for Academics is Dr. Joe Salerno, who all of you probably know. So before we introduce Clifton Duncan, I just wanted to say, I don't want you to think that this week is too abstract or theoretical or bloodless, that you're going to be bored. Uh, I mean, what you're going to learn this week is actually very relevant, very dynamic. And we've seen just over the last couple of years what happens when economics takes a back seat, or worse yet, when economists come out in service of the state apparatus. I mean, we've seen some real disasters. Talk about COVID, for example. Okay, we're, we're hearing from epidemiologists and immunologists going on CNN and telling us about, you know, the, the lethality of the virus or the transmissibility of it. But where were the economists talking about the trade-offs of the shutdowns and the lockdowns and all the unseen, which we're now paying for in spades, everything from mental health uh, to suicides to shortages and all these different supplies. So this is not an abstraction, guys. We need people like you out there in the world. I mean, look at the climate change and Green New Deal rhetoric we're hearing. Not only do they not want to talk about trade-offs when it comes to basically replacing 80% of all fo of fossil fuels which are used for all energy in the world, which make everything we know possible, replacing them in the next 15 or 20 years with what? So not only will they not talk about trade-offs, they'll just say it's all upside. It's just, it's just all upside. We'll just create all these great new jobs. I mean, this is the kind of rhetoric we're hearing out there. And how about inflation? I mean, can you, can you imagine the, the mania it takes, the maniacal mindset it takes to say, well, it's a result of millennials spending too much. I don't know if you saw this yet. It's, it's a result of Vladimir Putin. You know, it's, it's because he invaded Ukraine. So we got our work cut out for us. And really, we understand, and you'll certainly understand by the end of the week, economics is really just another word for social cooperation. That's what it is. And over here, we've got economics, we've got markets, we've got social cooperation. Over here, the very strong dividing line, we have politics and its close cousin, war, over here. So those are still the two basic choices in front of us. So we hope that you all make the most out of this week, get to know each other, make some friends, but really use the week to gain some clarity and direction in your own lives. That's really the best use you can make of Mises U.